hello everyone welcome back to this video series on clinical SAS programming in some of the earlier videos we have seen the structure and content of define.xml for sdtm data sets uh, in this video we will see the structure and content of clinical data reviewers uh, clinical study data reviewers guide which is nothing but our CSTRG so this is an example file from the fuse website which is pharmaceutical user software exchange website so you can find this document there so so it actually contains main four main sections the first one is the introduction and the second one is the protocol description and the third one is subject data description and data conformance summary sometimes we may also have some additional appendices as well to these main four sections so in the introduction section we have the purpose of the document and some acronyms or the abbreviations that are used in the documents or used somewhere in the study and which also contain the study data standards and other dictionary inventories used and as part of the protocol description so it contains the protocol number title and a short summary of the protocol design and then some information related to the trial design data sets and then in the subject data description it contains an overview of the subject data description and traceability flow diagram which contains like how the data is collected and how it gets mapped in the entire clinical flow uh, trial analysis flow and then some additional uh, notes related to annotated CRFs and then we have so explanation about the individual domains uh, where some additional explanation is needed apart from the information which is already captured as part of uh, defined.xml and then finally we have the data conformance summary so wherein we uh, provide explanations for the unresolvable issues which are uh, coming out of the pinnacle 21 report so we'll now see the individual sections one by one so if you see in the introduction section the purpose clearly states that this document provides context for tabulation data sets and terminology that benefit from additional explanation beyond data definitions document which is define.xml we already provide as much information as possible in the define.xml but sometimes uh, that information is not sufficient uh, enough for the reviewers to get oriented to the study so that additional information will be provided as part of this clinical study data reviewers guide so in the acronym section so we have some commonly used abbreviations of the acronyms and the meaning is given here for ACRF it is annotated case report form so this is some study specific uh, DLBCL abbreviation is being explained and then ACRF, ADT and IERC so, and similarly if there are any other acronyms or abbreviations those would be explained in, as part of this section and then we have our section 1.3 which is used to capture the uh, study data standards and dictionary inventory so uh, the SGTM model and the SGTM implementation that has been used uh, to uh, work on this study will be documented in this section so control terminology used for this study is uh, the date of the control terminology the, the version that is being used is mentioned here and then the data definition or the define.xml different versions of define.xml are available one 2.0 and 2.1 are also available now so the define.xml version that is being used to generate uh, the define.xml for this study would be listed here similarly so our uh, uh, concomitant medications and any other medications if they are coded so we need to specify the WHO drink, uh, the name of the dictionary and the version of the dictionary that is being used to code the medications and similarly adverse events and uh, medical history may be coded using medra so we need to specify the name of the dictionary and also the version of the dictionary as part of this section and then we have a short description of the protocol so it contains the protocol number and title so this seems to be uh, the CSDRG of a clinical trial which is a phase 3 multi-center open label 
randomized trial comparing the efficacy of some drug in combination with investigator's chemotherapy regimen of choice versus some drug and investigator's choice. So this contains the brief explanation of the title and other things. And if there are multiple protocol versions, so we need to list all the different versions uh, here and any changes that uh, have happened in data collection during different protocol versions would be listed here. And then the protocol design. So a flowchart kind of thing is being shown here. So for the reviewers to quickly understand the study design. And then, so in section 2.3, so if uh, any additional information, if the review, uh, the sponsor wants to communicate to the reviewers, that additional instructions will be captured for the trial design data sets in this section 2.3. And then in section 3, so we have subject data description. In section 2, it was specifically meant for protocol related things, and within specifically in 2.3, we are capturing information for trial design data sets. And other subject data description is uh, used or presented in section 3. So we have an overview. So there are some pre specified questions as part of the few CSDRG templates. So we need to answer it yes or no and provide some additional details on. Uh, for some of the questions why it is yes or no. So, so we'll take a look at some of the questions. So it says are the submitted data taken from an ongoing study. So sometimes for interim analysis we may be submitting SDTM data sets. So in that case we the uh, data will be from an ongoing study. So we may need to mark this question as yes in those cases but in this case it seems to be submitted only after the trial is completely uh, finalized. So they have marked it as no. So for the SDTM data set used as sources for the SDT analysis data sets, which is Adam. So they have said, yes, this is the SDTM data sets are used to create their analysis data set. And then uh, this, there is the standard question, do the submission data sets include screen failures? So they have not included screen failures data in the SDTM data sets. So they have marked it as no. And for any domains planned but not submitted because no data were collected. And then it is uh, there's no so there can be sometimes say for example we have this possibility of death details domain in some of the versions of the sdtm ig so if no subject has died in the study so there will be no information for that domain so we don't need to submit the records which have zero observation so in that case like maybe if we have such data set we will mark this question as yes and we will list those data sets uh, in this section and then the next question is are the submitted data a subset of the collected data? So if we are uh, subsetting for an interim analysis or something, then we'll have this as yes, and otherwise this can be marked as no. And then additional content of interest that the reviewers uh, will need when trying to review this data, so it would be captured as part of this additional content of interest section. So this again will be uh, varying from study to study. So say we'll see one or two points. So it says disease response endpoints, RS domain, uh, where RS eval is equal to investigator. So it says like, uh, there, I think there are different evaluators uh, in for disease response endpoints. It seems to be that uh, for the investigator response, uh, they are clearly uh, highlighting it to the reviewer that they need to subset the records where RS eval is equal to investigator. And then, uh, so there is this point which says subject deaths, AE domain where AE out is equal to fatal, DS domain where DS scat is equal to study discontinuation and DS decode is equal to death. So they are specifying the condition on how to identify the subject's death. So they have specified the filter condition to use for an AE domain and similarly for the DS domain. And then this, there is this traceability flow diagram in which says it says the CRF data and some electronic uh, ele uh, external data is also being used as part of SDTM data sets. And then SDTM data sets are used to convert ADAM data sets and then ADAM is used to uh, create the TFLs based on which the clinical study report is being created. So this traceability flow diagram is pretty standard across all the uh, studies which are based on CD standards. And then uh, as have any additional information on uh, naming convention or uh, 
color coding conventions related to CRFs can be captured as part of this section 3.3 .3. so and there will be some fields in the CRF which will not be submitted so we need to provide an explanation uh, for each of the not submitted fields and why they were not submitted so for example uh, we'll have a, a common page like uh, any adverse events experienced so the question will be like why or no as per the standard but for the data collection requirement they may ask that question of yes or no and then if it exists if the subject says yes they would continue filling the regular AE form but the information collected on that AEYN page need not be submitted so the such kind of fields of not submitted fields have to be uh, explained in this section on why that particular field is marked as not submitted in the annotations and then we have sdtm subject level domains so uh, we have this table so which will contain all the data sets that are part of this trial and uh, the data set is classified in terms of whether it contains efficacy data or safety data or other and whether a domain is a custom domain or not and whether that particular domain has a supplementary domain or not and if there exists any relationship to any other domain so are they related uh, to in the relic to which domain say for example here in this case the first row adverse events data set is related to cm data set and they have related uh, the records using c uh, relic data set so uh, they have also indicated that the adverse events data set contains safety information Similarly, we'll have other. So in this section, say for example, if in the following sections, if there is any additional explanation is there for any of the domains that needs to be hyperlinked as part of this table. So if we see in this table, so there are some uh, domains for which the text is hyperlinked and there are some domains which is not hyperlinked. The text which uh, is in blue has a hyperlink in between. So uh, which means that when they try to click on this uh, particular domain hyperlink it will take them to a specific section which contains additional explanation related to that domain so it is not mandatory to have additional explanation for all the domains so only uh, we can create a separate section in under 3.3 .3 only when additional explanation is needed otherwise we can skip that in this individual uh, sections but we still need to list that row in this table So we'll just go through uh, this concomitant medications additional expression which they have provided. So they said concomitant medications taken due to an adverse event were collected with the corresponding AE. So the relationship between these medications and the AE is defined in RELREC. And they have also said non-protocol specified anti-lymphoma medications can be identified using uh, CMCAT is equal to anti-lymphoma therapy. I think there are different classes of medications that are being captured as part of concomitant medications. It looks like so investigators would be interested in uh, trying to uh, understand the specific uh, anti-lymphoma therapy related medications. So they have given the explicit filter condition on how reviewers will be able to identify them. And then we have additional explanations for other sections. And then finally, the data conformance summary. So we have some pre-specific, pre-specified questions as part of this section. So it's it is asking us whether a validator has been used to evaluate the conformance of our data to the standards. So if it is used, so it is being asked, it is asking us to specify the OpenCDISC validator. This document is an older version, so wherein it, the OpenCDISC version of uh, community version of Pinnacle 21 called as OpenCDISC at that time. So now it is called as Pinnacle 21. So if you are working on the latest studies, so you will see the terminology of Pinnacle 21 community instead of the OpenCDISC uh, uh, reference. And then uh, there are these additional questions. So those are being filled. And in section 4.2, so uh, all the issues which are identified in the Pinnacle 21 report needs to be explained in this section. So here, So as an example, they have said like LB data set, there was a diagnostic message as part of the open city score pinnacle 21 community finding. Uh, it was missing units on value. 
so the severity was listed as error and there were 22 such instances so the explanation provided by the study team is that this is not an error because there are lab results for ph and specific gravity have no units so there is a check uh, whether uh, on uh, units is missing on a particular record in P P uh, open city square letter rules so this has triggered an issue but this seems to be a false positive because there are some lab tests like ph or specific gravity which do not have any units at all so uh, likewise similarly all the explainable uh, all the issues that cannot be resolved have to be explained in this section of 4.2 uh, that completes a quick overview of the clinical uh, study data reviewers guide thank you for watching and keep learning